I'm looking for a lover. We're recording. Welcome back to SNC Coaches React, and we're s- <laughs> we're still on the uh, the the fucking combat sports, cold blooded killers trend. There's so many great training montages. There's so many great training montages. So we we've done a lot of it recently, uh, obviously. So before we get going, just if you just stumbled on the video, we're SNC coaches, whatever, fucking weightlifting coaches, part of coaches. I've experienced martial arts for long time coaches and stuff. We recently started jiu jitsu and stuff. So just before anyone goes, yeah, well, you don't even know what it's like yeah. to be a cold blooded killer. Just go and watch the other videos. Yeah, I'm serious. If that is, if that's if that's your attitude, of, if that's the vein you're coming in here with, yeah, and we try to do these positively as well. Yeah, but if you come in here with this kind of attitude that like you're like, oh, these guys don't even know. He's a phenomenal. Um, he's a phenomenal jiu-jitsu player uh, there's a thing called in spite of not because of and this happens a lot in the sporting world we haven't even watched this by the way we're doing this in a cold reaction I'm just saying is, he, is it jiu-jitsu jiu-jitsu uh, he says, the commenter said he's probably the greatest lightweight jiu-jitsu player of all time okay. they don't know Galera. So this is, this is somebody commented on one of our previous videos and asked us to do a reaction to this yeah and we, like, we've literally done SNC like Dara's on SNC but like uh, someone who's won Abu Dhabi Pro twice as a as a purple belt. We have experience. We do do understand what's going on before anyone just gets a little bit defensive. Uh, but most be fair, most people in Jiu Jitsu are very open minded. We don't ever get that in the Jiu Jitsu one. It's mostly the boxing ones. It's always boxing. Always the boxing ones. But Even MMA isn't too bad. Judo I, isn't too bad. I think MMA. I think everyone understands now in MMA and stuff that there's a lot of people who don't know what they're doing. Like they could be phenomenal Jiu Jitsu coaches, but when they're doing their Jiu Jitsu or MMA or kickboxing S and C, they're like. Oh, I don't think you know what you're doing. Yeah, and that's why, like, literally in a rugby team, how many different coaches could you have? Like, so you have you have forwards coach, backs coach, you'd have a head coach. Yeah, then you'd have a defensive coach. You might have an attacking coach, or like, you know, you might have you, one of those you, floating. You, you could literally have a, the fly half, or the hooker. Sorry, could have his own coach. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Then you'd certainly have a strength conditioning coach, multiple more than one. Two yeah, or three, very often uh, a physio. Yeah, you then you'd have some consultancy coaches, which would be like kicking coaches and things like that that would drift in and out. So it's not an insult to the individual who is a jiu-jitsu expert to say they don't understand very well. Mm. I don't know why we're just giving disclaimers already, but I think yeah, we, just under, we so under, many? I just understand. I like rolling I've, in hard, like just I just raw. think this might be one where we're going to try to be nice, but there might be any great stuff in it. So I'm just saying. Just give me a moment to put my glasses on. Right. Uh, so it's called Lucas Lepre Strength Conditioning. I think we should listen. So they seem to be talking, so I'm going to try to listen to what they're saying. Okay. I can tell already he's going to be involved. So there's a certain side of S and C coach who like to get involved. It's in when the, the t-shirt is that tight. No, these kind of S and yeah. C coaches like to be like he's going to be hitting his hand off. Like you're going to be doing something on a rep. Well, he'll be, be counting coach. loudly and close, and he's going to alter the, the yeah. both the timbre and the volume of his voice depending on how intense you want to go. And this is not a this is not a negative. That's not a, no that's no no. Pain, that's like. just it's no. just a quirk. I just feel like this isn't going to be great. But he's in great shape. Oh no, that's not. So nice. these. Uh, we want to like work out today, the same workout I have been doing for like I started doing, doing this workout since maybe five weeks ago, five weeks ago. That's going to be the last week. Okay, so that's not a bad start. So if, so the consistency of workouts, so not trying to change up things, not trying to do a load of different stuff. If he's doing the same work and trying to progress in it, that's not a bad thing. Yeah. If he's, if, so this is one of the places where I think people can learn some stuff, you know. Uh, referring to this as a workout probably isn't the correct thing, you know, because this is more than likely a, a program that you followed for the last five weeks. And that's why we've spoken about a few weeks ago where it used to be a thing where you'd find like an arm workout online, you'd go do an arm workout, or you'd find squat workouts, you'd go do that. The important thing is the like consistency of the progression over the course of a number of weeks. So if it is like I've been doing this program for five weeks, then that's a great start. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Maybe that just might be a language thing, but ideally, in your S and C coaching, you're always doing something where you're progressing from week to week. So hopefully, that's what's happening. And this is like if you're on an exercise bike, you should be doing faster, better cadence, more volume, uh, more reps, more reps, more less sets. rest in, in between. Yeah. Like you're manipulating either frequency intensity time or type of exercise all the time like those things are constantly being changed so week of this workout yeah, 
Everyone's so, got to slightly like turn this yeah, 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 yeah. shoulders. Kitty is like you know he makes all the programs and uh, okay. as I have been working. So looking at this movement first, uh, so this you could call like down in a, a semi quadruped uh, position where you've one hand up and you're doing pulling into your adducting the shoulder, you're slightly internally rotating the shoulder with a band. Uh, this kind of banded power work is good right so if you're working in like a power variance uh, or a power bracket they're doing them aggressively they're doing them quickly there's it's an explosive movement he's doing it at the start of a session uh all good if this was if he did six or eight sets of this uh mm-hmm. two or three reps on each side nice and powerful it's probably a bit too sports specific there's probably no reason to have it that sports specific uh, you'd probably get it just as much out of a, like a pale off press or something like that but if that's what they're trying to do develop power develop speed this is the right time to be doing it uh, even though they don't seem to be warmed up so there's an interesting thing about like power development and using resistance in a variety of different forms when you're doing power training or plyometric training and I'd kind of put this in plyometric training so if you use weighted implements you're almost certainly going to get lower speed and lower velocity and hence you put out less power and you train incorrect muscle fibers you train incorrect motor unit sequencing you do everything kind of wrong you alter that movement pattern if you're trying to make it sport specific uh, one of those nuances though when you're using resistance is that if you use bands a lot of the research lately has been kind of congealing onto this area that accommodating resistance is actually quite good for power and velocity stuff now haven't really seen anyone, and we haven't used it ourselves that much, use bands in terms of power and velocity training. Uh, it's would certainly be on the fence and just wait and see what happens and that kind of stuff. Some of the research does seem to be going in that direction. Uh, how you would use that and stuff would have a lot of different nuance to it. So, for example, if he was doing this with like a dumbbell, it would be not productive towards power and velocity. But it seems likely that the use of a resistance band here, for a com- so it's called accommodating resistance, is a better option for mm-hmm. that is this necessary at all uh that would be a different argument than i think probably to be honest it's probably not like it's yeah that is an argument though of like it may be necessary depending on the particular fighter's needs you know mm. so if if he's got caught in the ground a number of times in his last few fights and he can't do this movement very aggressively and if he was able to do that throw or something you just don't know like there's always that caveat of there could be a really specific thing mm-hmm that he or it could be a, a prehab or rehab piece but yeah. in terms of power training like where we commonly see issues is they're commonly in a circuit with other things commonly do them in conditioning pieces when someone is tired and they're trying to do these explosive movements and by the look at this lucas is doing them at the start of a session while he's quite fresh so they gave out to us the last time for being too on the fence with some stuff and being nice to the person so if he has an issue where when he's on top and the other players underneath right and he's trying to pull them over or something yeah and we're saying we're going to replicate this movement with a band right this is the wrong way to go about it yeah there's a better way to do it you just get better upper body strength you do he's benching 1.5 double body would be much more productive than this a uh, plus 15 kilo body weight kettlebell or weighted pull up mm-hmm. or whatever for five reps would be a far better way of giving him this power here power strength is very non-specific that's why strength is phenomenal because you just as you get stronger it kind of brings up everything so if you're trying to do specific stuff like this it uh is not really that productive yeah it's not going to make it worse although in some cases the use of resistance bands and a movement alters that movement and alters the muscles activated during that movement in a negative way which there will be a paper review on which is very interesting i out with him like for eight years he you know all my my body like you know what i like to do it and yeah he goes and good shape study a lot yeah. like you know the positions that i put myself Got some pecs. and mm. from there he developed you know so the this exercise is, that yeah, i need to they, work on to be stronger you know it's more explosive okay. so this is the classic example of what owners just talking about yeah using a band to make a movement harder in an incredibly specific way right so he's on the floor here uh He's trying to go into a sweep to get the guy onto the ground or he's grappling with the guy. He has a band around his hips. So hips will commonly be where your kind of center of mass will lie or just above the hips. So he's really restricting his center of mass. So he has to work harder to get his legs around the guy to manipulate his body around the, the guy. Gareth, why is that a bad idea? So we always talk about this as well. So you never want to be altering your sports specific movements. So the things you do in your sports 
you never ever 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 want to alter those in all but very very minute and specific circumstances so you never want to alter them with resistance bands you never alter them with weight you rarely want to alter them under fatigue you always want to be doing these as fresh as possible so there is no super compensation for sports specific movements doing a movement poorly under resistance and under fatigue doesn't super compensate and allow you to do it better when you're not under fatigue all you do is you're training specific synapses and particular motor patterns in a way under this new fatigue so you're just mudding the water so if you imagine you have a crystal clear bowl of water and this is this expert lucas is a has obviously all these motor patterns ingrained all these movements are super high quality for him and these are imagine these in a clear bottle of water or a clear bowl of water and every time you do movements like this you're adding little drops of dye and you're kind of making this water less clear and you are eventually changing this and if, if he was continue doing movements like this he would just slowly add more dye each time and slowly taint his quality of movement the other thing like we're talking about with the resistance bands is the idea is that you'd be activating the same muscles in the same sequence but the addition of a resistance band could actually be activating and deactivating the muscles he wants and activating other muscles he doesn't want involved in this movement so it could actually be not only net zero so not really positive or negative but actually it could be more negative and that's what you see here so you see with that resistance band is pulling him laterally to the side so that would appear if you were looking at this like you're an alien who just landed on earth you didn't understand gravity and you saw this okay he just moved from that direction it's pulling him back here so he has to move with more force he's putting more effort to pull himself against that green resistance band there's only really two things that you're going to ever work on when you're in like impacting with the flow right so first is you obviously have to fight against gravity gravity will be your felt force that's coming straight down through the floor and then you have your reactionary force with the floor so that's pushing off a wall pushing off the ground or whatever like that so you don't have a huge amount of external forces acting upon you obviously if there's another person there and they're pushing you that's a separate external force that's acting when you come in here and you see that green band pulling him to the side, it's exactly like Gurf is saying. That's obviously going to change a motor pattern, change a movement pattern. So uh, say here, if it was anterior hip flexors and anterior uh, core muscle is what he used to pull his legs up and wrap them around the femur of the, his grappling partner here. Once he starts to bring in a band that's pulling him laterally, then he's just changing that motor pattern. So it's not now anymore uh, the anterior hip flexors and the uh, whatever the whatever muscle groups were being used. Now it's going to be, okay, anterior hip flexors are almost turned off because they're not important anymore because there's more resistance around my torso than there is around my legs. And it's just practicing bad movements. It's like trying to drive an F1 car, car and you're practicing on your pedal bike. Yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, so now we're working on a phase three circuit. I like to uh, periodize the training into three different phases. Um, this is the last phase, which is all about keeping the intensity high, but the volume low. So there's less net load on the system to prevent injury. Okay, so that is very, very good to hear. That's great to hear a jiu-jitsu coach and an SNC for them talking about periodizing training because... The fact that he's even aware of those concepts and incorporating the training is a phenomenal start. Uh, so he says at this end, I assume Lucas is coming near to a fight. So he said he's keeping the intensity high with the volume low and he doesn't want to hurt Lucas. So that is one of the prime things as an SNC coach is you, your goal number one is don't hurt the athlete. Don't make them worse at their sports. That's like your most important thing. So that is very good to hear that he is trying to approach it in that direction. Okay, so here we have basically kind of a resisted, uh, I suppose. Resisted good morning squat. Yeah, resisted good morning squat kind of baby, I suppose. The angle they seem to come at things is like sports specific stuff. So potentially the same problems as beforehand, but I'm not very mad at it. You know, if you're trying to pull away from someone's grip, uh, I'm not too mad at this. I'm not too no, like, I no, 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 like ladder or pulling back against someone like that is definitely something they're going to have to do constantly is a weighted good morning going to be better is a two times body weight back squat going to be better uh we've been accused of barbell love yeah before what did he say no what did he say uh, uh, a lot of barbell worship a lot of barbell worship uh it just so happens that 
uh, most professional athletes in the world use barbells because all barbells are the same, very easily scalable, very easily progressed and regressed. Um, so there's nothing we're not we're not uh, particularly attracted to barbells or, or anything like that. They yeah, just a lot of barbell worship. Yeah, uh, it, it's just the most effective method of, of making someone stronger. Okay, so we got more of that same crossbody movement. Uh, I'm not particularly sure what they're going for here, to be honest. Again, I don't really know. Is it a core exercise? Is it a sport specific exercise? Uh, I don't know. Super uh, engaged. Super physically engaged coaching. Yeah. What do you think this is? This is what I don't like. So now we see like supposedly lower load, lower volume, higher intensity work. And now this is like the third part in a circuit, clearly slower, clearly more fatigued. And it's just not that fast or not that sharp. Everyone who's like done grappling or watched grappling will understand the importance of very, very fast and agile footwork, right? So your ability to, to, move in a certain direction and then change direction very, very quickly. The last thing you want to do is restrict someone in that kind of change of direction work. So there's no major advantage to me just throwing myself forward against the band and then kind of moving my feet in around that because that's not how we move ourselves around. So if I'm walking normally, I am um, manipulating my center of mass. So it's over my base of support. I then want it to slightly exceed my base of support and I'll move my feet. And as I continue to lean forward, that will propel me forward. When I have a band, what I do is I have to propel my center of mass further forward. So I just kind of throw more weight forward and then my feet kind of catch up as we go. So you don't really end up working any harder, particularly in this case where you're static and you're being held against a band and you go forward, come back, go forward, come back, go forward, go back. You don't do anything really valuable. It's not like your feet are working any harder. It's not like you're getting more accurate where you move your feet. You're certainly not getting more accurate with how you manipulate that center of mass and how you move that center of mass through space because essentially, and as you'll see in the video, you just throw yourself forward, move your feet throw yourself forward and move your feet and it's not really beneficial overall. So if this wasn't in a circuit, mm -hmm. I would like this. Yes. If this wasn't in a circuit, it's local muscular endurance work, although he's doing it as a very, very full body movement, grip strength, grip, uh, muscular endurance of the muscles that are involved in the grip is so, so important for Jiu Jitsu. I think this would be a great movement. I can see this movement being used in a Sika Jiu Jitsu program if that was being very, very specific. But I wouldn't ever have it in a circuit with all the other things where you're doing it when you're super tired. This should be at the end. This should be in your accessory work where you're just kind of working on those specific pieces. So more of the same with this. Okay. So this is more of the same as what yeah. you're talking about with yeah, that, yeah. that the kind of dash forward, the initial first two steps. To be honest, it doesn't really look like there's any benefit to this. I, I'm, no. I'm not seeing it. This is just making someone tired. Yeah. Okay, so we saw some very interesting exercise there, which getting up in jiu-jitsu isn't incredibly important, but it's useful to be able to do it, I suppose. And so he's doing it with a kettlebell or weighted kettlebell. Um, kind of productive, but again, not to be accused of barbell worship. But if he if he could just squat double body weight, he'd be able to do this pretty easily. Mm -hmm. Like this wouldn't be a thing yeah. you need to worry about so much, you know. Well, if you could just do a good pistol squat. Yeah, if you could do a good pistol uh, squat, there's no need to. certainly there. wouldn't. Like the, the use of a kettlebell here, a lot of times people will feel like they're working harder with the use of a kettlebell the kettlebells can be very very facilitative in that case it's like having a, a dumbbell here and as you sit forward you would throw the dumbbell forward and kind of follow it up and you're doing a weighted sit-up that's easier than a normal sit-up uh, so i will say in these cases when you see the, the kettlebell being used unless he's kind of training that motor pattern it's a new motor pattern he can't quite get uh 
the the kettlebell will be beneficial there. In this case, the kettlebell just makes it a bit more easy, or a bit easier, a bit more easy. Jesus, I'm bad at talking. I think as a conditioning piece, that would be absolutely perfect. It's mm -hmm. just some uh, body weight work. It's very, very specific uh, movement. Probably doesn't need to be that specific, but he's making himself tired, and that's good. He's not producing a lot of power in that position. He's not trying to gain strength. He's just doing some conditioning. me up on him so mean this is not easy stuff so if people could run through this program you know perfectly without an issue it's probably not dialed in and if somebody can't get through it at all it's probably too hard it's probably too complex so for Lucas this was ideal you know uh, and uh, as far as going into worlds I mean I think it's kind of exactly where I would want him to be you know, a couple of things here and there, but, you know, you'll notice at times, like, he was getting gassed out. He started to lose his posture, and I was just like, look at me, make, you know, and he came right back. And that's what's so awesome, is when you get to see that, when you get to see somebody, like, ready to fail, ready to give up, and then it's just that snap, and then they're like, boom, all right, I'm back. You know, and, and that's what we want to see, because that's what we want to see in the fourth round. That's what we want to see happen when he's tired. So, the coach is talking about something very interesting there, and this is not really a thing in relation to the techniques they're using, but an overarching concept in the actual training of an athlete, especially in conditioning. And it came up a few weeks ago where someone talked about what do you do when you want to give up during conditioning? And it so easily happens. It happens to everyone. Conditioning is very, very long and boring. You know, if you do compare it to like a clean, most times if you're any PB clean, you can barely remember what happened or PB snatch. You know, there's no time to kind of give up. If you're going to miss, you've given up already before you started the lift. Whereas a conditioning, you have to keep going, you have to keep putting in as much intensity as you can for a long period of time. So it is important to be on top of that. Uh, it's interesting that the coach is able to kind of communicate with him there and make sure that they are still pushing as hard as he possibly can. Anything saying that there? No, I think that like that weighs in really heavily to that kind of cognitive sharpness, you know, like where where you're able to be in fatigue, you snap back in. That is very much a learned skill. The combination of learned skill plus actual fitness, so like how much conditioning you've built up, how good your blood values are, how dense your mitochondria are in the cells, so how well you're after or you're able to recover, combined with the skill of being able to be sharp under a huge amount of fatigue is definitely something that needs to be trained. And that's where, like, just as we're talking about it now, that is where a lot of the the kind of rocky montage really heavy power training during conditioning sets where uh someone is really tired and they're trying to get them to work really hard during it that's probably not the best way of achieving that kind of cognitive sharpness or ability to to regenerate uh cognitive uh awareness during a piece uh more than likely or the, or the best method for for improving cognitive abilities under fatigue would be just to make the person fitter and to make sure they're less fatigued and then they'd be better in the last round of a fight. Sorry, I have something to... So I had a look at the comments here. So it's quite a few video views on the video. It's like 40,000. So a general called Josh Taylor said, silly S&C methods. Strength training is not supposed to look anything <laughs> like the performance of the sport. Josh Taylor, you are bang on. So, so, so then, it's funny, I did this disclaimer before we even looked at the comments and I said this to the start. So then someone came in with the ad hominem approach or the kind of... Uh, yeah, but he's a very good at jiu-jitsu. That's the... It's, no, 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 no. it's the in spite of not yeah. because of. So someone says he won nine world tournaments, two of which nobody even scored a single point in him. So I'd say what he's doing in work game. Josh came back with a proper answer. Just because someone's winning things doesn't mean their SNC is working. It just means he's gifted athlete with great technique. <laughs> if you follow this side bits, you're absolutely wasting your time. That's great. Yeah, yeah. No, but then... Uh, oh, they bite back again. So someone talking about the trainer having degrees in exercise and physical therapy. To be honest, that means nothing. I know no. loads of people with degrees and master's degrees who... More more, more could, worse than does that. Yeah, like, it, that means nothing. Like, if somebody is a master's or whatever, uh just means they paid more for... As somebody with a master's. Like, it just, with a master's, like yeah. it just means you paid more for college. And uh, then someone goes, ignore him. 
he has that old approach you'd have him doing squats, bench, and running two miles. All the things we said he should be oh doing. God. That is hilarious. There's a reason it's the old approach because people figured out what's worked and then kept doing it. And now we've gotten through this area again. Like we were talking about the start. It's funny how this keeps coming up where people being like, um, like you know, that this, this kind of gimmicky stuff in S and C, and we do see it in, in combat sports. That squat, bench, and running two miles. That would be perfect. Yeah. That's why it's S&C. That's why it's... Well, no, you'd have, like, you'd have some more modern things in there, like uh, high-intensity interval training. You'd certainly have some power work in there instead yeah, of yeah. just squatting and of benching course, and deadlifting. Yeah. But, like, yeah, it's funny. Like, combat sports uh, do have a... There's a, a kind of a glaring hole, right, in terms of... So a lot of sports are inherently linked with, with universities. Um, so... Take rugby clubs, for example. A lot of rugby clubs will be linked with a certain university. Rugby is a late specialisation sport, so a lot of the times the athletes they have are involved in university. So people in academy setups are in university as they're playing. And it just it's a synergistic relationship. Those people get involved in studies. The coaches tend to be involved in studies. Uh, people who were in master's programmes tend to go and coach for that team because they're close by, right? This The same is true for swimming, hockey, many of the Olympic sports, certainly all of track and field. There tends to be an inherent link there between higher education or between universities and the sport that's going on itself. Now, that doesn't happen with everything. It certainly doesn't happen with professional soccer. Very, very early specialization sport. It doesn't tend to happen in combat sports. For whatever reason, most of the time people are kind of out on their own. They have their own dojo or their own gym or whatever and they develop athletes in their way and it just that kind of base line of this is what periodization is this is what x y and z are before you even start which is kind of a that's just a given in a, in a lot of uh, situations like it's just a given that someone would have a degree or a master's degree if they were to be an snc coach for a collegiate level team or whatever it is uh, and that just doesn't happen in combat sports, whether that be for whatever number of reasons. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, this has gone on long enough. Yeah. If Thanks you've made it, shh, I'm on the program. Oh yeah. If you've made it this far, we do have a ten week program, four days a week for combat sports. It's not specific jiu jitsu. It's just specific, or it's non specific, like we're talking about for S and C for combat sports. So f- six weeks of strength training, four weeks of power stuff. Uh, it's four weeks in or sorry four sessions a week uh you can get on the website link below uh if there's other stuff you want to let's react to this because this came from a reaction to a last video people asked us to react to this so just leave it in the comments and if it seems worthwhile we'll definitely get on it and if it's a comprehensive video and we can get something from it and talk about it we will definitely 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 do it as long as not fully negative because we don't want to rag on anyone all the time also if there's a fight that breaks out in the comments make sure you weigh in heavily yeah if you see people fighting in the comments make sure you engage because yeah, the yeah, algorithm yeah. loves that also yeah. the algorithm also loves you share things uh, so it knows it does it it's crazy it knows where everything gets posted to and where the websites get links through all the cookies tell the other cookies so if you link it somewhere else YouTube thinks people like it uh, so websites are mad yeah it's mad so if you do share places it helps as well 